According to Jamie Dimon, chief executive of J.P. Morgan, the storm clouds over the economy can clear. Do not, however, become overexcited. He still believes that we're in uncharted ground. Even the tiniest glimmer of optimism may inspire investors in a market full of dread and gloom. This was well shown by J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon. When the bank's better-than-anticipated financial outlook pushed the stock up 6.2% and the S&P 500 up 1.9%, he summarized his opinion by saying, Strong economy, big storm clouds. According to Dimon, I'm calling it storm clouds because they're storm clouds. They may dissipate. If it was a hurricane, I would tell you that. Or a tsunami, like we had in 07 or 08. Hold on. In this video, we will take you through why a 2022 recession would be particularly special. Credit-driven recession versus inflation-driven downturns. The great financial crisis of 2007-2008 and the dot-com collapse of 2000-2001 are two recent recessions that were credit-driven, in addition to the pandemic-caused recession of 2020. In both instances, excesses caused by debt accumulated in the housing and internet systems and it ended up taking the economy over 10 years to digest them. On the other hand, today's recession is more prone to be sparked by excess liquidity rather than debt. In this instance, extremely high levels of fiscal monetary stimulus associated to COVID pushed money into consumers and investment sectors, causing inflation and fueling financial asset speculation. The root is stronger. In addition to historical patterns, a number of economic indicators suggest that, should a recession occur, it will be less painful. The car and housing sectors are both robust. While inventories are low and likely to drop much lower with increasing borrowing rates, housing prices have been high and resistant. Due to the scarcity of semiconductors, manufacturing rates for automobiles are lower than at earlier peaks. Order backlogs may maintain industrial activity unusually high for a recession while supply networks clear. The labor market is still active, in addition to being tight as measured by rates of unemployment. The labor market is also displaying record high ratios of fresh job vacancies to prospective employees. This shows that businesses would decide to lower their open job advertising first, possibly postponing the impact on unemployment rather than firing existing employees. Households, businesses, and the financial sector all have their balance sheets in the healthiest condition in decades. Furthermore, considering current demands for energy infrastructure, automation, and national security that are not primarily related to the business cycle or the Fed's activities, drivers for corporate capital investment remain robust. Corporate income could be more reliable. As more businesses develop subscription and fee-based business models, the profit share attributable to recurring revenue sources is increasing, as shown in the composition of the stock index nowadays. In essence, experts are optimistic about the fundamentals of the economy and think they can act as a stabilizing force in the wake of a downturn. Investors should exercise patience and think about adopting tax-efficient rebalancing to offset their principal overweight and underweight positions, as well as by recovering their losses, and aim for the greatest possible asset class diversity. So, does this mean there won't be a recession? That's the big question. 2022. The core symptoms of a recession have not yet materialized. Recessions are defined as a considerable decrease in economic activity that is distributed across the economy and should last more than just few months, according to the National Bureau of Economic Research. Even though the duration of the coronavirus catastrophe from peak to trough was very brief, the extent and breadth of the decrease were sufficient to satisfy the MBER's requirements. By that measure, it's improbable that the U.S. economy is presently experiencing a recession. Economic production did increase throughout the first three months of 2022 at an annualized rate of 1.4%, but that was nothing compared to the 31.2% fall that occurred through the second quarter of 2020. The main causes of the downturn, aside from the general slowdown in domestic economic activity, were also slowdowns in net exporting and inventory accumulation. Higher imports during a period when Americans are spending a ton of money were a major contributor to the decline in trade. Yet as firms' hoarding spiked greater in the previous quarter, the drop in inventory was more of a return to the regular pattern. The economy probably would have had some other quarter of fantastic growth if those two things hadn't had an impact on overall GDP. 
Consumer spending, which accounts for almost two-thirds of GDP, increased at an annual rate of 2.7%, while corporate investments surged at 9.2% rate, indicating that businesses continue to expect bright futures. More good news? The irresistible drive to recruit persists. According to Andrew Flowers, a labor economist at AppCast and research director at Recruitonomics, it is still a market job for job seekers and that companies have an insatiable appetite to hire. According to him, as of June, employers' intentions to hire until the end of the year have not slowed down, according to AppCast, a company that assists companies with recruitment efforts. According to the data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there are currently 61% more openings than there were before COVID. Flowers anticipates that despite recent increases in inflation, demand for leisure and hospitality employment will stay high as long as folks seek to buy, attend events, cruise, and eat out at restaurants. However, other occupations such as those in manufacturing and construction may be particularly susceptible to the increase in interest rates and see a decline in job opportunities. Flowers advises those who are now aware of possibilities in their area to strike while the iron is hot. Labor market is unsustainably hot, as per Fed Chair Jerome Powell. It is an economy where the rate of unemployment is at 3.6, which is extremely near its pre-pandemic low. Wages have been increasing rapidly. Powell stated in response to inquiries at a press conference a few weeks ago that there were practically two job openings for each individual who is genuinely searching employment and that this has caused a genuine mismatch in salary negotiations. The Fed chair is mindful of the suffering that will be endured by more individuals as he struggles to control inflation. The Fed doesn't intend to make people unemployed, he declared. However, the Fed also believes that price stability is essential for having the type of labor market desired. According to Andy Challenger, Senior Vice President at Challenger, Gray & Christmas, a business that keeps tag on layoffs countrywide, the job cutbacks so far have largely been confined to a few industries. We haven't yet noticed a significant number of cutbacks, he claims, but a few industries that appear to us to be possible bellwethers for the rest of the economy if things dramatically slow down in the upcoming weeks and months are experiencing their sharp surges in layoffs. The revival of the economy is indeed unfolding. A number of signs that the economy is still expanding at a strong rate are ignored if one holds that the economy is now in a recession. The most carefully studied indicators show that the recovery is still going strong. One aspect that is still almost twice as strong as the pre-pandemic trend is job creation. Until May, the U.S. increased non-farm payrolls by 390,000, exceeding experts' predictions and putting the nation on course to make up all of the lost payoffs by the end of the summer. The fact that unemployed filings are still close to their pre-pandemic lows amid some layoffs at prominent tech businesses suggests that employers aren't mass firing employees to save expenses. Despite the abnormally high level of inflation, Americans have continued to provide gasoline to the economy. In April, consumers spent a record of $677.7 billion at stores and restaurants, defying predictions that rising costs would eventually start putting pressure on demand. If you are a job seeker, then you should be more cautious. Here's why. Others caution that the current climate of unpredictability should serve as a lesson to be careful when shifting jobs and to make absolutely sure you have such a suitable one ready and waiting for you before you do so. The coolest thing you can do in order to make the trade without a span of unemployment, in the words of Stephanie Aronson, vice president and head of the economic studies program at the Brookings Institution, to engage in some on-the-job hunting. Your chances of landing a new job are still fairly good, and accomplishing that may still be preferable. According to ADP statistics, salaries for job holders increased by 6% in the first quarter of 2022, while they increased by 8.7% for job switchers. Considering the anecdotes of hiring managers competing for talent in the past year, Aronson says that the job searchers should be ready to put up the work in interviews. It won't be enough to pop up and be willing to work, she warns, if recruiting starts to cool. There will be greater competition because businesses will be recruiting a lot fewer individuals, so you'll need to concentrate on improving your candidacy. According to estimates, the next recession will start in 2023. Even though the economy is now performing well, a recession might yet be approaching. A few experts predict the slowdown soon, 
claiming that the Federal Reserve's relentless rate hikes would be growing to a complete stop. Even yet, the majority of estimates point to 2023 as the year to be concerned. The delay is a result of how slowly Americans change their buying patterns. Even during the pandemic, demand for commodities increased as lockdowns reduced expenditure on in-person services. This caused goods expenditure to rise well above the pre-crisis average, where it is still at now.